most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, happy to hear that Kane is pursuing adventuring. Kane's father states that he'll personally hire some tutors to help Kane get ready for the outside world. Waiting in his room, Kane wonders how strong his tutors will be, hearing that his tutors have arrived. Running to the window to catch a glance, Kane uses a teleportation spell, accidentally teleporting into the air, accidentally falling onto his two tutors. Having been cushioned by breast, Kane apologizes, learning his tutors' names are Maestra Millie and Maestra Nina. Officially introducing themselves, Millie shyly introduces herself as a D-rank adventurer, whilst Nina calmly greets Kane and his family. Scolding Nina for being so nonchalant around nobles, Millie accidentally shows off Nina's elf ears, only to be interrupted by Kane who asks the girls to be casual with him. Kane's father has hired Millie and Nina to tutor Kane for three years, getting Kane excited to see how strong he can become. Heading out to the training field, Millie asks to see Kane's swordplay, nonchalantly swinging and wielding a wooden sword. With both girls impressed, Millie asks to spar with Kane, shocked that Kane is able to keep up with her, even though Kane is only five years old. Asking if Kane has a protection, Kane reveals that he has the God of War's protection, explaining his genius with the sword. Completely tired out, Millie states that Kane will now learn magic from Nina, handing Kane off to Nina. Revealing that she has a level 3 protection for the god of magic, Nina states that she'll be teaching Kane the basics of elemental magic, but Kane shows off his mastery of basic spells, creating water, fire and rock spells, impressing the girls. Nina notes how Kane is capable of chantless magic, a technique that even elite sages can't even master, and on top of that Kane wields all elemental affinities. Seeing that Kane's spells have destroyed the training area's walls, the girls suddenly spot Kane wielding an item box, able to store and retrieve items. Knowing that Kane truly is a genius, Millie and Nina note how they need to move elsewhere as Kane may destroy the whole place. Just then Kane suggests that they train outside, revealing that he has never left his home before and that he can let loose and truly show his powers. Knowing that isn't a bad idea, the girls chat with Kane's parents, stating that they've gauged that Kane's powers surpass a beginner student. Therefore they ask for permission to leave the castle, in order to teach Kane intermediate sword skills and magic. Knowing that this day would come, Kane's mother and father agree to let Kane train outside, but state that he must return home before sunset. With the castle gates opening, Kane rushes outside, admiring the vast greenery, only to head towards a nearby boulder. Given permission by Nina to cast an intermediate spell, Kane conjures a firewall, instantly blowing apart the nearby boulder, and blowing the girls back. With such an intense spell, the girls note how Kane should be exhausted as intermediate spells cost a lot of mana, but it seems that Kane has quite a huge mana pool as well. Just then, Nina and Millie sense a creature approaching, spotting a killer rabbit appear from the nearby forest. Readying their weapons to slay the rabbit, the girls helplessly watch as the rabbit speeds past them, rushing Kane who easily evades. Shooting air bullets, Kane nonchalantly slay his first monster, receiving congratulations from Millie and Nina. Wanting to show off his first kill to his family, Kane uses his item box to store the corpse, learning that Millie plans on buying a magic bag item that is supposedly able to function just like the item box, but it's a little pricey. Fired up, Millie asks Nina to search for more monsters to slay, prompting Nina to cast a search spell, spotting several creatures nearby. Amazed by Nina's spell, Kane learns that the search spell involves spreading a thin layer of magic into the surrounding, allowing for the users to sense other users with magic. Focusing, Kane copies Nina's spell, spotting the same creatures nearby, impressing Nina who notes that Kane learned the spell on his first try. With the three slaying the various creatures nearby, Kane fails to slay the last one, chasing it towards the nearby forest, but is suddenly called by Millie to never enter the forest. Apparently hundreds of strong monsters reside in that forest, and every few decades, all the monsters gather and wage an attack on the kingdom, hence the reason for the huge wars around the kingdom. Knowing that he must become strong enough to protect his home from these monsters, Kane heads home to check his stats, amazed that he's now level 8, only after one day of training. Checking his skills, Kane realizes that the gods have given him a skill that multiplies his XP gain by 100 scared that he'll have to hide this skill or else he'll be deemed a monster by others. 
The next morning, Millie and Nina reason that Kane should face stronger monsters, heading to the town's guild to gain information on tougher monsters. Introducing herself as Rudy the guild receptionist, Rudy gets flustered to learn that Kane is a noble, stating that wolves are a step above killer rabbits. Just then, an adventurer interrupts the girls, insulting them for babysitting a kid all day. When Millie and Nina ask the adventurer to leave, the adventurer reminds the girls that he is Cross, a C-rank adventurer, grabbing a hold of Nina, prompting his men to restrain Millie. Before Cross can do anything indecent, Kane interrupts asking Cross and his men to let go of the girls, but when Cross refuses, Kane strikes Cross in the arm. Retaliating, Cross attempts to punch Kane, but Kane easily dances around him, prompting Cross to grab his blade. Getting serious, Kane begins dodging all of Cross's slashes, catching the blade only to disarm and toss Cross out of the guild doors. Seeing Cross's men about to harm Millie, Kane knocks out and tosses the men out as well, gaining praise from Nina and Millie, who notes that Kane is quite impressive with his martial arts. Heading out, Kane begins to train his magic, taking breaks with the girls every so often. With three years passing, Kane learns that Millie and Nina's tutor roles are coming to an end reasoning that he should get them a parting gift for all they've done. At night, Kane teleports outside of the castle, heading into the monster forest in search of items to craft magic bags for the girls. Slaying a blood ogre for Millie and an earth dragon for Nina, unknowingly drawing the attention of the kingdom's knights and his father, who set out to the forest, wanting to know the cause of the loud noises in the forest. When Kane's father and his men arrive at the forest, they realize that there are no monsters nearby, Instead a single napkin of the perpetrator is left behind. The next evening whilst Kane is slaying wolves, Millie and Nina note how it's quite sad, as their final day with Kane has arrived. Chatting with the girls, Kane unveils the red and green magic bags he's crafted for them as a parting gift, shocking the girls as the blood ogre and the green dragon Kane slayed normally need a whole rank party to defeat. Kane states that each magic bag should be able to store an entire mansion, prompting the girls to reveal that items are considered national treasures. Additionally Kane had made it so that only they can hold the items, making them theft-proof, bringing the girls to their knees. Knowing that they'll never be able to repay Kane, Kane states that the time he's spent with them is easily more valuable, prompting Millie and Nina to lean in for a kiss on each cheek. Before Nina and Millie leave, they state that they'll come help with Kane whenever he wants in the future, signaling the end of their tutoring contract with Kane. That night, Kane's father confronts Kane, scolding Kane for causing such a ruckus and drawing so much attention in the monster forest, knowing that the napkin left behind belongs to Kane. Kane's father reiterates that Kane keeps his powers a secret, as it's what's best for him and the family. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and comment.